Hey Siri, what were the results of Tesla's earnings call for Q1 2023? Here's what I found. Hey Siri, do better. What's the text? What were the results of Tesla's earnings call for Q1 2023? Still on it. Tesla reported a net income of $2.51 billion for Q1 2023, with a revenue of $23.3 billion. It's easy to get wrapped up in the excitement around AI tools like ChatGPT and what they mean for the future. But in this episode, I want to switch it up and help you get more out of AI today. So we're going to make Siri a thousand times more useful by giving her all the powers of ChatGPT and all the benefits of Google at the same time. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, let me give you a quick example of why you might want to give Siri superpowers in the first place. Hey Siri, what were the results of Tesla's earnings call for Q1 2023? Here's what I found. So when you ask Siri a question, she just returns a bunch of links. That's a good start, but it's not very useful when you're on the go and when you just want the answer. That's where large language models come in. Hey Siri, use ChatGPT. What's the text? What were the results of Tesla's earnings call for Q1 2023? As an AI language model, I don't have access to current and upcoming events or financial reports as I don't have browsing capability. However, as of April, one challenge with ChatGPT is that it has limited knowledge of the world after 2021, since that's when its training data ends. ChatGPT can also be prone to making stuff up, so we need to pick a tool that has an API key, access to Google, and is trained to always provide its sources. That way we can trust the answer that we get, but we can also verify it for ourselves if we have to. Hey Siri, do better. What's the text? What were the results of Tesla's earnings call for Q1 2023? One moment. Still on it. Tesla reported a net income of $2.51 billion for Q1 2023, with a revenue of $23.3 billion. Although Tesla's profit per share of 85 cents met the expectations, the company fell slightly short of the expected revenue. I also have the shortcut copy the answer to the clipboard so that you can paste it wherever you want. A note, a text message, a Slack channel, or so on. Hey Siri, open the notes app. Now I just paste the answer into a new note and I can reread the answer, go check the links if I want, or just save the info for later. So if you want to make your Siri actually useful for answering questions like these, here's what you need to do. There are a few links in the description below. The first is to a tool called WriteSonic. Don't worry, their free plan gets you access to the API and lets you generate up to 10,000 words. Once you've signed up for WriteSonic, Go ahead and log in, and then let's go ahead and click on ChatSonic. This is WriteSonic's version of ChatGPT, except it has a few significant upgrades. First, you can decide whether it uses GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, depending on how complex you want your conversation with the bot to be. If you do switch it to GPT 4, it's going to cost you twice as many words, but the answers are better and you can get really creative with your prompts. You want to use GPT-4 if you're asking ChatSonic to pretend to be somebody else, like Elon Musk, as it answers your questions. Let's play a game. Pretend you're Elon Musk with a 420 IQ when you answer my questions. What's the most important thing an investor should consider before selling a stock? The second option for ChatSonic is whether or not you want to include the latest Google data in your answer. If you turn this on, it's going to cost you twice as many words again. But sometimes this is the only way to get an answer to your question, like the one about Tesla's most recent earnings call. So your 10,000 word budget really only gets you 2,500 words worth of answers if you're always using GPT-4 and you're always enabling Google. But one of the benefits of Chatsonic is that it always cites its sources. So you can always click on the links it provides to verify the answers for yourself. And when it comes to things like investing, I think that's always worth the price. All right. Let's go get our API key, which we're going to need to give to Siri in just a second. You can find it by clicking on your profile in the top right, then heading to your API dashboard, and then where it says your API key, go ahead and click reveal API key. Then all you need to do is copy it to your clipboard. Don't worry if it accidentally leaves your clipboard because you can always come back to this menu and copy it again. Next, you're gonna go to tickersymbolu.com slash Siri, which should be the second link in the description below. That takes you to a set of instructions on how to upgrade Siri with Chatsonic. If you are following along, 
go ahead and click the big button to download the shortcut to your Mac or to your iPhone. Then click on Setup Shortcut. Shortcuts are just a way to automate a set of actions, and one nice feature of shortcuts is that Siri can run them. That's what we're leveraging here. In the first dialog box, it's going to ask you whether you want to use Chatsonic or ChatGPT. If you want to use ChatGPT, you can delete the word Chatsonic here and type in GPT instead. Since we're using Chatsonic, we can just hit next. Regardless of which chat you choose, you're going to need to give the shortcut your API key. So go ahead and paste that in now. If it's not on your clipboard, just swipe over to your right Sonic window and go grab it again. Once you've pasted it in, go ahead and hit next. Then if you want the shortcut to be able to leverage Google, put true in this final text box. Otherwise, you can change it to false. If you're trying to squeeze the most out of your free right Sonic account, you can set up two versions of this shortcut and then give them slightly different names. Then set one of them to false and only call the Google one when you think you need it. I find that to be more trouble than it's worth, so I'm just going to set this variable to true. Another thing you can do is go to the shortcut and then long press it. Then go ahead and click on details. From there, you can do things like make it available on your Apple Watch so that you can use the shortcut while the phone is in your pocket. That's it, so let's try it. Hey Siri, do better. What's the text? What were the results of Tesla's earnings call for Q1 2023? On it. According to the web search results, Tesla reported a profit of 85 cents share, non-GAAP, with $23.3 billion in revenue for Q1 2023. Three. This met profit expectations, but slightly fell short of awesome. revenue expectations. And like I said earlier, the shortcut also automatically copies the answer to the clipboard. Hey Siri, open the notes app. Make a new note, just hit paste. So in addition to being able to hear the answer, we can always paste it anywhere we want for future reference. Let's try a few more prompts. Hey Siri, do better. What's the text? How did the stock market do on Friday, April 21st, 2023? One moment. According to two, on April 21st, 2023, the S&P 500 gained 3.73 points, or 0.09%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 22.34. Hey Siri, do better. What's the text? Does Warren Buffett own any semiconductor stocks right now? On it. According to recent reports, Warren Buffett's conglomerate, Berkshire Hathaway, recently took a big position in Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing in its latest filing. However, the company sold 86% of its holdings in TSMC just three months Whoa. after investing $4.1B and into the company. In general, Warren Buffett has been averse to technology and semiconductor stocks. Hey Siri, do better. What's the text? Will I ever truly be happy? One sec. Being happy is a subjective experience. And what makes one person happy may not make another person happy. However, people generally strive for happiness because it is a... Yeah, maybe don't use it for that one. I have a lot of upgrades in the works for this shortcut, like letting you write out your prompt instead of having to speak it so that you can get really specific about what you want. For now, if you want to make more advanced prompts, the best way to do that is directly through Chatsonic, which you can access with your free WriteSonic account. Here's one quick power tip for getting the most out of that right now. You don't want to think of your newly upgraded Siri or Chatsonic as search tools. You want to think of them as skilled interns that will do exactly what you ask. So the more specific and clear you can be, the better the results. Here's a real example of how I use these tools right now. I'm trying to compare the discrete GPU market share for different companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Intel. Give me a table where the rows are the companies and the columns are their discrete GPU market share for 2021, 2022, and the percent change in market share for each company from 2021 to 2022. Use the latest data you can find to fill this table out completely. For example, if Q4 data isn't available, use Q3 data for both years. Make sure to check multiple sources and cite them so that I can verify your answer for myself. So I told it exactly what I'm trying to do. I gave it specific examples. I told it how I want it to format my results, and I gave it instructions on what to do if the data that I'm asking about isn't easy to find. There's a reason that they let your prompt be up to 4,000 characters long. Make sure to take advantage of that. So hopefully you can see how much of a time saver this is without forcing you to just blindly trust the answer. 
I'm excited to get this all working in the Siri shortcut, as well as a few other upgrades like automatically pulling in your location data when you say here or around me, and automatically pulling in your local date and time data when you say things like now or today. Let me know in the comments if there are any other features that you want to see in this shortcut, or what kind of use cases that you want it to support. I think that we can build something really awesome here, and I'll make sure to make a follow-up video when all the features are added into the shortcut. Or if you want early access to the features right as they come out, you can sign up for my email list using the third link in the description below, or you can head to tickersymbolu.com AI. Email is just an easy way for me to share my quick takes on exciting AI tools, tech, and stocks that may not make it into my videos. I'll never spam you because even I don't have time for that. This questionnaire is also a great way to tell me what kinds of things that you want me to build and help shape the future of the channel. After all, this is the channel that invests in you. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more content like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.